Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Today, before I begin uh, tips number 102, I'd like to uh, direct your attention to this website entitled LFE, and that stands for Learning from Experience. Well, now I have several of my videos on there, and I call them courses, machine shop courses, and uh, these are available for your viewing. And uh, there is a complete set on the Atlas Lathe, 40 chapters in all available. And they're broken down into volumes, which is uh, anatomy of the Atlas Lathe, basic lathe operations, intermediate lathe operations, and advanced lathe operations. Or get all four of them as one here. So go to www.lfe.com learning from experience and this is a complete course on the Atlas lathe that will help you beginners to become proficient as a machinist on a lathe. Go to the website and there are previews here if you click on them. And now we begin today's video. Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Today standing before my recently acquired Duro drill press and uh, this drill press is the only one I have that has what we call a production table, or I call it a production table, with uh, a coolant trough and T-slots. Now sometimes I like to clamp the work to the table using uh, various types of clamps, but I need uh, some T-nuts in order to fit into these T-slots. And the traditional size that you use on a bridge port, which you see here in black, uh, literally uh, causes the other one to be dwarfed. You know, th this is the size I need, and it's really a small one. So I'm going to have to make some of those. And I think I'll make four of them, but actually I'll make five, so i got a spare just in case I uh, uh, destroy one or misdrill one or whatever. Sometimes I make an extra. Today's uh, uh, video is a project, but we want the T-slot to fit into these little uh, slots here. And there'll be a hole drilled and tapped in there. It'll be a 3 8 16 hole. And I'm going to make a bunch of those. And uh, this is primarily a milling project with a little bit of drilling. No lathe work at all. So late, let's take a look at how I will approach this job. The first thing I did was to take my dial calipers and my uh, scale and I measured the width of the slot, the depth, the width in two places. And uh, normally I just put a few dimensions down on uh, paper, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration I made a, a little uh, drawing. And there are the dimensions. And you can see it's uh, 600 thousandths at the uh, widest dimension, and the height is uh, 500 thousand, which is a half inch and all of the other dimensions on there are uh, on there as well and this particular little sketch is a double scale but I'm gonna make all five of them at one time as shown in this drawing so it's much easier to handle a large piece than a small piece so I'll mill the full length of the piece so that it looks something like this and then chop it off to length This is square stock, 5 8 square, and it's about 5 inches long. Actually, this is a piece of key stock like you'd buy at any hardware store, sometimes called make a key, but any type of cold rolled material is fine. And the first thing I'll do is put it on the Bridgeport mill, and I'm going to mill it to uh, the uh, dimensions shown here. That is, I want it to be 600 thousandths in one direction and 500 thousandths in the other. And since it's 5.8 stock, which is 6.25, uh, I'm going to take 25 thousandths off of one side and 125 thousandths off the other side. And then I'll have the basic size that I need to start milling the other dimensions. Since obviously I'm not going to find in my stock rack or anybody else's stock that is 500 by 600. You're gonna, I'm going to have to reduce it. And I'll do that first, so I'll see you over at the Bridgeport presently. I'm at the Bridgeport mill, 
I cleaned the vise out real well so that there are no chips in there and I'm using inch and a quarter parallels and I'll put a pair of the thin parallels in there and uh, this stock happens to be plated which isn't necessary at all because it's going to get milled off uh, most of it will be milled off so I'll put that in, uh, in the vise snug it down tap it with brass hammer tighten the vise and then I'm going to proceed to take this side down to 600 thousandths. I didn't do any layout on my work at all. Now you certainly can do that, but I'm basically doing my layout uh, on the machine itself. So the work is secure. I have a 3 8 uh, end mill in there and I'm running it at about 600 RPM. And in order to take this down to 600 thousandths, I only have to take off uh, 25 thousandths off the one side. Also remember that on a project like this, uh, the, the tolerance isn't that critical. So if I'm within about 5 thousandths of what my drawing uh, calls for, that's just uh, perfectly uh, acceptable. So I'll, I'll turn the machine on and then slowly raise the table until I touch the work. Now you could put a piece of tape on there if you wanted or whatever and then once I uh, touch the work I will zero out uh, the feed or the crank on the, the knee and I'm going to take it all in one pass and I'll, I will uh, crank it up 25 thousandths. So here we go. Okay and I just touched the work and I'm going to back it off. And I'm setting the collar for uh, zero, and actually I'll take off 24,000 because I certainly took off at least a thousand when I touched the work. So up 24,000. slid the parallels down so I can get the micrometer on the other end and I'll check to see what my uh, dimension is. Be sure and wear safety glasses when you do any operation like this. I have mine on. Remove the chips with a brush and now I'll use the micrometer and I'm going to mic it on the far end And a micrometer works better than a, a caliper for that. And I am right on 600,000. So this is a very valid method of finding the location of your work just by coming up and touching it and deducting a thousandth. So I'm down to dimension on the one side. Now I'll do the other. I have remounted the work on an adjacent side. I took the uh, parallels out of there. I wiped them. I cleaned the inside of the vise. I deburred the work because there were, a gr were burrs on there from the milling operation. I got my glasses back on and now I'm going to reduce this side to 500 thousandths. And I'll do that in, uh, oh I think I'll take three passes. Uh, perhaps uh, 75 off the first one and then I work my way down and take, uh, take off just 10 or so thousands as a finishing pass. And I will locate the depth of the cutter the same way, although it should be the same right now as it was for the other side. Deducting the 25 thousandths, so, because I'm already 25 thousandths down, but I think I'll relocate it, but I won't show that on camera. 
I'm going to take a total of three passes on this surfa surface, uh, 75,000 for the roughing pass, and then 40,000, and then a final 10,000 as a finishing cut. This is my final pass and then I'm down to 500,000. I'm only taking off 10,000 on this finishing pass. Not that the finish is very important on this because part of this will be milled off as well. It's The material is now down to rough size and I have removed all of the uh, milling burrs on all edges and it is now 500 thousandths thick and 600 thousandths in this dimension if it helps you on a project like this go ahead and put layout die on it and uh, and you can uh, with your height gauge make layout marks but I'm going to do everything on the milling machine by touching the work and then feeding in with the dials the appropriate amount so back to the bridge port. Each and every time you take the work out of the vise and then put it back in, make sure that you open the vise up, remove the parallels, uh, remove all the chips, wipe it clean, wipe the parallels clean, put the work back in, uh, snug the vise up and then tap it down with your soft hammer and then retighten and tap it lightly again to make sure it's down on the parallels and the parallels should be tight when you go try to push them and then you know you're seated on the parallels otherwise you might be up a little bit on one side or the other so check your parallels now looking at the drawing again the dimension right here is 75 thousandths and from the top on down is uh, 250 thousandths so I'm going to come in and touch the work and then advance the feed in the 75 and I'm going to touch it on the top and uh, raise the knee to 250 thousandths and take it all in one pass clear down one side and then I will repeat it for the other side and here we go now I was already at the correct height from the last pass and I double checked that but when I come across, I, am a, I can hear the cutter touching the work, so I'm going to raise the knee 250 thousandths, and I've already zeroed out the collar on the knee, and up I go 250 thousandths, that's two and a half revolutions of the knee crank. One, two, and 50, so I'm at the right height now. Now it's very necessary to use parallels of the right height so you avoid uh, hitting the vise. Now I already came in until I touched the work. Then I moved uh, the cutter out, or should I say the table back. I'm going to zero out the crossfeed collar and move in 75 thousandths, or if you have a digital readout, use the uh, a digital readout and move in 75 thousandths and uh, if you want to use an edge finder you certainly can use an edge finder of the electronic type or the wobbler type or whatever kind some people like to put a piece of tape on there until you hit the tape or a little uh, piece of, uh, of paper until you feel the paper get pulled out of your hand so there's all kinds of ways of uh, finding the edge of the work but since this is not a critical uh, part at all I'm just using the touchy-feeling uh, method. So, 
again, I have touched the work, and I'm going to move it 75 thousandths. But I have to zero out the collar first. And this is what I meant by zeroing out the collar. And then in 75 thousandths. There we go, and then I, I will lock the cross feed, which I'm doing right now. That way it won't move on you. I am dangerously close to touching uh, the vice jaw. Taking this all in one pass, 75 thousandths uh, in this way and 250 down, so pretty hardy cut. I'll finish that off camera.